Today, I'm going to be taking you through a brief, albeit far from comprehensive, guided tour of a relatively new but exciting medium. So, don your clunky cardboard headgear and jump with me into the virtual world. Although a new medium, virtual reality combines several aspects of many different old media to create a vastly unique and immersive experience for its users. An experience designed to immerse its user into a whole new world. And in fact, the potentials and possibilities of virtual reality do seem limitless. We already see how virtual reality has emerged in both entertainment and education. In It Was Like I Was There, inspiring engagement through virtual reality, Clarice Moran and Maya Woodall make the argument that this form of media is, in fact, beneficial for young learners, saying, Experiences like these can be used to build support for students as they interact with the virtual environment, and cognitively construct knowledge for themselves. So, being able to experience something firsthand is far more beneficial than receiving secondhand accounts of something. However, there are limitations to this fairness, which comes with virtual reality. In Remediation, Balter and Grusen eloquently frame these limitations in virtual reality as a medium whose purpose is to disappear. This disappearing act, however, is made difficult by the apparatus that virtual reality requires. The design limitations of virtual reality take away from what Bolter and Grusen later describe as an immediacy of the medium, or a consumer's desire not to be held back by the medium in which they are using of being able to effortlessly lose yourself in a virtual world indistinguishable from our own. People want an immediate connection with their media. Whether you have to throw on an uncomfortable headset or you're making a special trip to a room specifically designed for virtual reality, these precious few steps take away from our ability to immediately access the medium as consumers. For example, there is a virtual cat, and there's a real cat, and the real cat, ah, and the virtual cat, ah, it's far more cooperative. <sighs> Furthermore, there's also the differences, I mean, between a living, breathing animal and the virtual thing. To further illustrate this, I give you my personal experiences with virtual reality, where to access this technology, I either have to ask my younger brother to use his PlayStation, slip on this headset as big as a bread box, and try not to wander into my own television, or drive to my local mall, walk through the Dick's Sporting Goods, and visit We Are VR, an establishment that I'm 90% sure is just a money laundering scheme. And... While virtual reality does have its design limitations, it's also possible to play into those limitations. Today, I'm going to be taking a closer look at one example that capitalizes on those limitations. Keep talking and nobody explodes. Keep talking and nobody explodes is a multiplayer cooperative virtual reality video game published by Steel Crate Games in October of 2015. 
The concept is straightforward. Two people are working together to defuse a series of bombs which grow progressively more difficult as the game goes on. It is unique in its gameplay in that one person dons the virtual reality gear and enters the world of the ticking bomb, while the other remains in the real world with a bomb defusal manual. Only the player in VR is privy to what the bomb looks like, while the other player is the only one who has access to the bomb defusal manual. A book so long and convoluted, memorizing all of the defusal techniques would be far too arduous. The goal is for the player in VR to describe what they see on the bomb concisely and accurately enough for the player with the manual to walk them through the correct process for defusing the bomb. Oh, I just... Do you oh. have two strikes now? Two strikes, I'm hitting the red button. No, no, stop! <laughs> now you hit blue. Hitting the blue button. Is the module disarmed? Select. Yes. No. Now what? Now what? All right. Two minutes, 36 seconds. The original button will flash followed by another. Repeat yes. this sequence in order using the color mapping. The sequence will lengthen by one. Oh! What? Did it, did it explode? Yeah, did my popcorn? As you can see, the game can be quite difficult. I find it incredibly interesting how keep talking and nobody explodes brings these ideas of immediacy and immersion crashing down. It frames success within the game as both players' ability to acknowledge the existence of the other medium, either the video game or the written text, while remaining within their own immediate media. They're remediating both the concept of the virtual reality game and the instruction manual. The instruction manual! They've managed to turn reading an instruction manual into a form of entertainment. We were reminded of the work of James Paul Gee, who advocates for multimodal text that uses words, images, video, and sound to communicate in ways that are more complex and meaningful than any of the modes alone. Multimodal text encourages students to think at a meta level, and to make connections between their world and the world of the text. This converging of two worlds through multimodal text is what makes learning so much fun for the students. And the same principle applies to gameplay. It's a strong attribute and what makes the game so much fun. A medium which is multimodal in nature comes with its own uniquely different learning curve. Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is a game which hinges on multiplayer cooperation. That's the whole dynamic of the game. Building communication skills and establishing an understanding or, or even a code between the two people playing. Which boils down to learn how to communicate or violently explode. Thinking of the game at a meta level is key to avoiding this. By thinking of the game not as a mode of escapism, but in terms of the very game itself, a player is able to become successful. Virtual reality has already entered the mainstream of our culture and contains hundreds of promising applications for its use on the near horizon. I hope that this one example, which I have highlighted today, indicates how, despite its current flaws, VR will continue to grow in practicality and usefulness. I will now conclude with an example of gameplay of Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes which illustrates the effective teamwork and communication skills the game aims to create. Almost there. Here we go. You want to do Morse code or complicated wires? Uh, complicated wires. Complicated wires. 
I got a blue and a white striped wire, no LED, no star. Leave it. Uh, next one, solid white, LED is on with a star. Does it have more, two or more batteries in this thing? Let's see, one, three batteries. Cut it. Cut it. Cut. Uh, I got blue wire, uh, no LED, no star. Leave it. Leave it. Uh, solid white wire, no LED, no star. Cut it. Cut it. Uh, that one, the green lit up, so we're good. Morse code. What you got? Dot dash. Wow. Watch, watch it close. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dash. Dot, dot. 3.522. 3.522. You are. Sweet. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Watch out. What? That is a picture that's really worth oh. some money.